Hey guys, Wayne Jennings here with another gimbal review. This one is designed specifically for use with your smartphone. This is the Ashwan Smart X Pro, and it's a great little gimbal with some really nice added features. For instance, there's a built-in wireless battery charger, meaning I can be charging my phone as I'm using it. It also has this little ring light in the front to help illuminate my subject. And there's a great app you can download that kind of takes it to the next level as far as professional video shooting, because then you can use this power zoom and this focus wheel on the side. So it really, really improves your video shots. Now this was sent to me courtesy of Pergear. If you're not familiar with them, Pergear is an online photo video company. They sell all kinds of, you know, lenses, tripods, lighting, and of course, gimbals. Anyways, they, they sent this to me. I didn't pay for it, um, but they wanted me to do a review. Now, they're not paying me to do this review. They just want my opinion. So I'm going to get out, try some shots, and see how it works. The Smart X Pro 3-axis gimbal measures 10 and a half inches high. That's 268 millimeters. It weighs in at 10.9 ounces, or 310 grams, and will support a smartphone weighing up to 8.8 .8 ounces, or 250 grams. A replaceable 3200 milliamp hour rechargeable lithium ion battery will power the gimbal for 7 to 10 hours on a full charge. It features a controllable pan of 310 degrees a roll of 330 degrees, and a controllable tilt of up to 76 degrees. All right, so let's just uh, open up the box here and show you what is included inside. Of course, there's the gimbal itself, which folds up into a nice compact unit. There's an instruction manual, and you get this small folding tripod base, and down here, we have a USB Type-C charging cable. All right, so let's take a look at some of the physical characteristics of this gimbal. Uh, first of all, when it's all folded up, it's uh, nice and compact. And to set it up, you just kind of pry these two pieces apart here, like so. It's kind of hinged up here, just flips up like so. Now, it is uh, built, it seems to be mostly a plastic material, uh, but it does seem fairly durable. It feels pretty rugged in your hand. It has a few uh, nice convenient features, like on the bottom here, there's a little metal uh, clasp where you can attach a lanyard, and it's nice to see that it's made out of metal as opposed to plastic. Uh, on the very bottom, there is a quarter-inch tripod socket, which is nice, you can attach that to a regular tripod or a monopod or a selfie stick, or it does come with this nice little tripod base, which uh, basically just folds out like so. It's got these three little legs. Uh, seems to be fairly rugged and it's got these uh, rubber feet, so it's not gonna slip on you. And it has this quarter inch bolt, which just threads into the bottom like so. And uh, the nice thing about that, I find this handle itself is, is kind of small. So if you have big hands, this just gives you a little extension. So it's a little easier to hold the gimbal with this attached. And then that way, when you need it, you just spread the legs out and you can set it down on a surface. Uh, another nice thing on this is it has a removable battery cover, which is magnetic. It just pops on and off with a couple of magnets on the side. And you'll notice there is a replaceable battery inside, 3200 milliamp hour rating. Uh, and it's nice because it is replaceable or you could get a spare. Uh, that's just a nice feature to see. And as far as charging, there's a little USB type C port on the side here. And it comes with this little USB cable, but it's really neat. It's this flat cable. And as you can see, it coils up very small, very compact. Anyways, you just plug that in there to charge it up. 
then you can plug the other end into a computer or a wall socket or a power bank. Now attaching the foam is pretty simple. It has a spring-loaded uh, clamp on the end here. You just have to make sure that the logo is facing you uh, right way up because if it's upside down it's not really going to work but it is just this spring-loaded mechanism so you just get your phone here and it just slides in there now you have to make sure that the lens is on this side because if it's on this side uh, this bracket could get in the way so it's just a matter of putting it on like that pulling this bracket up and it just pops on like so so it really mounts quickly and easily. So I thought a good way to check out this gimbal would be to compare it to shooting a video without a gimbal. So I've got a smartphone mounted on just a selfie stick here. I'll get some shots walking down the trail and then I'll get some shots using the stabilizer walking down the same trail and we can compare the two. So this first shot I'm just using my uh, iPhone just on a selfie stick, no stabilizer. Just walking down this trail. It's a bit snowy, a bit slippery. I'll just turn the uh, phone around here. There's a shot going forward. And like I said, I'm just hand holding this. So, you know, it's a bit bumpy. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retrace my steps, put that camera on the gimbal, and then you see how much smoother that shot can be. Okay, so I've gone back. I'm retracing my steps. This time my iPhone is attached to the SmartX Pro gimbal. We'll just turn it around here. So there's the trail in front of me. It's a uh, winter day, snow covered, it's a bit slippery, but this gimbal does a nice job of making things nice and smooth. Just come back to me. So there you go, compared to just a handheld shot using a gimbal like this, I think you'll agree it definitely makes it for a nice, smooth, level kind of shot. There are four main operating modes on this gimbal, and each one uh, makes the camera operate in a slightly different manner. A few other features as well. I'm just gonna show you close-ups of some of those. So I'm just gonna come behind the camera here and try to show you. Uh, right now, it's in pan follow mode. And basically, if we push this little button down here, uh, that cycles through the modes. But right now in pan follow mode, that means if I rotate the handle of the gimbal, well, the camera pans and follows. Now it also keeps this level plane. So if I move the gimbal this way or this way, it just stays on this level plane, but it follows the pan movement. Now we'll push it once more. And now we're in the follow mode. And in the follow mode, um, it basically adds a tilt function. So if I tilt up, the camera looks up to the sky. If I tilt down, it looks down to the forest floor but it still maintains that pan follow from side to side. And if I rotate the gimbal this way, it still keeps this nice level plane. The next one, push it once more, and it goes into the lock mode. Now I can do a tilt of it, but basically it stays locked facing that direction. So if I pan the handle, the camera does not pan. So that's good if you're doing like a tracking shot where you're going side to side like this because it won't waver. It will continually focus that way. Um, and if I tilt it back or forwards, again, it stays looking forward. So no matter which way I do it, it is locked in that direction. The next one is POV or 
um, point of view. And basically that adds the tilt up, tilt down. Uh, it continues to give you the pan follow, but it adds this rotating feature. So it actually rotates with the handle. Now in this mode, if you use the joystick to go side to side, you can do this inception mode where you can make the camera rotate around so you can manually rotate it to whatever spot you want. Now, if you double click this button, the camera goes back to what they call the center position. And now you're back to where you began. Now there's a few other features. And there's also, if you click it three times, it will do this automatic inception move. So I'll just click it three times. One, two, three. And the camera automatically flips down, starts recording, and does this um, pre-programmed inception mode. Probably lasts about 30 seconds, but it just does this one move and you don't have any control over it. But it's a cool way to get a, a quick shot like that. And then when it's done, it gets to the bottom there, stops recording, and it just flips back to where it was. Now there's a few other neat features. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a little light, a ring light here, and that's controlled by the power switch. So you can cycle through, let's see if I can get it going here. It's hard to tell, there you go. So that's the low, hit it again, medium, hit it a third time, goes to high, and then once more, you can turn it off. So that just gives you a little bit of fill light, you know, as it's getting dark out to fill in the shadows on someone's face or something like that. Um, and also there's the uh, record button down here. And when you're hooked up with Bluetooth with the camera, if you hit that, it will record, but it has another function. And that is if you just give it a double click like that twice, it uh, flips up so you can do a vertical shot. So if you're doing like a TikTok video or something, you have this orientation. Just double click it to get back. And the other cool thing with this button, if I push it, and hold it, that's the record button. If I push it and hold it for about three seconds, it engages the wireless charging system. You can't really see it, but basically there is a sensor on the back here and it's touching the camera. So it will wirelessly charge the phone while I'm using it. So that's really, really neat. Now, a few other features. There's a, a zoom button down here and a manual focus control and those really allow you to get some really nice professional effects. So in order to use the physical hardware controls on the side of the gimbal, you have to download the app, which I've done here. It's the SmartX Pro app. Just hit the start button here and it takes me right in and the app is loaded. Now I can use these controls and there is a zoom control here and it's just a toggle. If I push it up, as you see, it zooms in slide it down and it zooms out and then the really nice feature is this focus wheel as i turn this i can focus so that it's going out of focus on me so that's great for a real close-up shot where i want to be really precise now anytime you want to go back to autofocus you just touch the button down here where it says mf for manual focus just touch that boom it goes back to autofocus this app will now allow me to do a lot more tweaking and fine tuning of settings on the camera. If I hit this button on the side, I can go in and change filter settings so I can, you know, change the color, the hue, the saturation. There's these pre-programmed settings. Personally, I just like to keep it as the original one because I'll do all that in post-production, but you know, some people might like to go in and adjust it. There's this button here, which allows you to select your video frame rate and your resolution. We have 4K, 1080, 720, and then I can shoot at 24, 30, or 60 frames. I can even select the video codec I want to use. So that's kind of a nice feature. And then this button here opens up a sub-menu where I can do a lot of changes. Now, some of these you find on the camera uh, anyways as standard features like the three second, 10 second, uh, you know, self timer, you can turn the flash on or off, turn the flashlight on or off. But of course, because it's designed for the gimbal, there are some extra settings. There's this gimbal setting. If you click that, there's a parameter settings. You can go in and change a few things like uh, 
the pitch axis and the yaw axis, you can adjust that, the joystick speed for vertical and horizontal. So there's some fine tuning you can do to allow the um, gimbal to operate smoother. There is a grid you can turn on or off here, which basically puts a little superimposed grid, which allows you just to you know help compose your shots a little nicer. Uh, there is an anti-shake button down here, which is kind of odd because the gimbal does all that for you. However, you can use this app when it's not connected to your gimbal, so maybe that anti-shake would help you when you're just hand-holding the camera. There is a button over here that says Lens, and that will allow you to select the different lenses, assuming your camera has more than one lens. This one has two, so if I hit that, it will go to my telephoto lens, Hit it again, it goes back to the regular lens. But the button I really like on here is this one that says Expert Mode. And if you hit that, uh, it just allows you to adjust all these settings. Let's just close that. So now I can go in and manually make adjustments to things like the exposure, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, focus, and the zoom. You just select the one, in this case, exposure compensation. And then I can make it darker or lighter just by sliding this. I can go in and change the shutter speed, uh, change the ISO, or leave it on auto. Same with the white balance. I can change the focus. I know I showed you I can use the focus wheel, but I can also hit this focus button here and then use this slider to manually focus it on here or put it on auto. Same with the zoom. If I hit that, I can zoom using this slider. Now, just like your regular phone, there are some settings down the side for different photo and video settings. This app adds a few extras. Let's just slide down here. There's this one called Hitchcock, which basically lets you pre-program a zoom function. So you use these sliders to select where you want the camera to start and stop. Then you decide how long you want it to be. And when you're all set, you hit the start button and it basically records and does that pre-programmed zoom for you automatically. There's another uh, function here called Inception, which if you hit this button to record it, it will flip down and do this automatic pre-programmed rotating Inception move. Now it's the same move basically as the gimbal does if you hit the button on the gimbal. It's just an extra option where you can do it right from the, um, the app instead. Uh, let's just slide it up here, see what else is different. There is um, there's a slow motion, which you can get with your camera anyways. Uh, you can just go in and select the frame rate and the speed. Um, there's the time lapse. Again, most cameras will do this, where you can tell it uh, how many frames to expose and over what period of time. But the one I really like is this trajectory delay, which basically combines time lapse with movement. So I can rotate the camera, say I want it to start there. If I hit that, that becomes my first keyframe. Then I'll pan the camera over here, hit that. That's my second keyframe. If I hit the next button, I can go in and tell it how many frames to expose over what period of time. And when I'm all set, I hit the start button. And it basically zips over to where that first keyframe was, starts recording, uh, a frame of video, in this case every half second, until it reaches the end where I've pre-programmed it. Now you can put in more than two keyframes. You can have it start low, tilt up, pan across, tilt down, three, four, five, six keyframes until your effect is done. So that's a really nice way to get, say, some cloud movement at, uh, of the sky, but have it uh, move as well. And here's an example to show you what I mean. Uh, this scene of the clouds going by was shot using that trajectory delay function. We also have this uh, long exposure setting to do uh, time exposures at night. And there's also this one called live broadcast, which allows you to broadcast live depending on what platform you want to use. Now, personally, I don't do live broadcasts, but it has this option built in. So as you can see, this app 
allows you to do a lot of really interesting things combined with this gimbal. In conclusion, I am really impressed with the SmartX Pro gimbal. It has a lot of really impressive features. However, there's one kind of thing that's a little bit on the negative side, and that is the fact you can't really operate this gimbal in this horizontal fashion. The main reason is the tilt will only go 76 degrees. So even if I want to tilt the camera, it just doesn't come up far enough, which is kind of disappointing because I actually like holding a gimbal this way, especially if I'm doing a, a low shot or if I put a you know, a monopod on there to get a high shot. It's just, you just can't do that because of the limitations with the tilt. So you gotta shoot everything in this vertical position, which is fine because there are a lot of really positive things about this gimbal. The fact that there's a built-in wireless charger. I can be charging the phone while I'm using it. There's a ring light on the front. I really like that. And the app you can download is very impressive with its pro features like the zoom control and the manual focus. That just takes this to a whole nother level.